Today's video is about something that not a lot of people really talk about. It's about warping. What's up guys, my name is Noah and you are watching The Productive Producer. What is warping? You might be wondering. It's Ableton's way of time stretching samples to fit the tempo of your song or fit the grid. Music is based around tempos and rhythms and we need to make sure that the samples that we're loading into Ableton fit to that tempo of the song that we're writing. Otherwise it's going to be really hard for it to mesh and sound cohesive and flow. So by the end of this video you are going to learn how all the different warp modes work. You're going to learn about crucial warp settings that you are probably unaware of right now. You're going to learn a couple of really cool little known techniques that not a lot of people are using right now that could really dramatically impact your workflow. And you're going to have a better understanding of warping in general. So let's get into it. Let's put the headphones on. All right. So what I've got here is I've got I chose this loop right here because it is outside of the genre of the loop I made over here. This is a drum and bass loop. This is what it sounds like unwarped. So then we warped it down to 125, which is house music tempo, and built a kick and snare or kick and clap loop underneath it. But before you even get started with warping and stretching, we're going to get into that in a second. Let's open up our warp settings. So right here, under record warp launch, we have this section right here, the warp slash fades. You probably want your loop slash warp short samples to be on auto. Auto warp long samples, this is, this is sort of depending on what you use warping for. I like to have it on just in case, but I understand some people like to have it off. The default warp mode in Ableton is beats, which for Anything other than drums is the worst warp mode to have. I like to have it on complex. So I'll keep that on complex. You can you can switch it to any one of these. We're going to go through each one of these in a minute, but complex is what I choose for this part. The next one is create fades on clip edges. By default, this is turned on. If you're like me and you load one shot drum samples into audio tracks, that will just shave off part of the transient. And you don't want that. You don't want that for when you're using audio for drum samples. So turn that off if you like using audio for your drum samples. Okay, now we got that out of the way. Let's get into the cool stuff. So I showed you earlier that this, this drum and bass loop, it's definitely not in time. If we turn on the metronome here, you can hear. Definitely not in time. So let's get this to be in time. Let's hit warp right here down in the clip view. And we're going to say, would you like to keep the clip's current timing? Click yes to insert warp markers that the clip retains its current timing. Choose no to revert back to the previous set of warp markers. So we're going to hit no. Okay, so you can see now that it's, it's stretched all the way out. And here's an important factor right here. The segment BPM, this is the original tempo of your sample. So a lot of times, if you get a sample from any reputable sample library, it's going to have a key if it's a tonal sample and it's going to have a BPM identifier, which helps you determine what the original BPM of the sample is so you can stretch it or warp it to the current project's BPM. Because chances are you're probably going to be using a bunch of different samples from a bunch of, with a bunch of different original BPMs and you want to make sure that you know all of those original BPMs so you can accurately warp them into your current project's BPM. Okay, the important thing for the segment BPM is that our original BPM here is at 174 because that's what it says right there in the sample. And sometimes, guys, sample packs lie. Some, sometimes sample packs don't have the correct BPM. Maybe the timing is a little bit off. So it's always good to double check this. So now we're listening. Sounds not bad, right? Let's hear it with the, uh, the drum sample here, or the drum loop that we made. Switch it back to, let's actually go through the warp modes here. So this is beats. And beats is by default is set up like this. So you can kind of hear how it's like, it sounds, it sounds different from this one over here. 
That one still sounds grainy, but this one sounds like there's like a bunch of extra stuff in there that wasn't originally in the loop. We have the first one right here, which is essentially set to off. So once it plays that little part of the sample, it stops playing. So it plays that little bit of the sample at its original BPM. And then when the next transient comes, which is what we have it set to right here is transients, it stops playing until the next transient. So this is what that, what that sounds like. So we can actually turn that down to make it even shorter. So listen to this. Makes it a little bit dry. We can set the next mode to loop forward right here. That one's kind of cool, kind of gives it a grainy texture. And then the last setting here is loop forward and backwards. So when it's gonna, in this setting, it's gonna move forward and backwards until the next transient. And you can kind of hear how it's like almost, it's sort of like skipping over itself, going forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. So all of these different warp modes will, they'll vary in texture and tone and it's, it's all a matter of like what you're trying to accomplish. Let's go to the next one here. The next one is tones. This one's sort of like a, a granular warping mode. Doesn't really sound great for this loop. It works pretty well for use like doing on vocals or synth loops if you want to create a new texture or timbre to this thing. Uh, the next one, texture. This one all is like a sort of a combination of tones and but it also has a, a cool flange effect in here too. This one's repitched. Now this one is probably what's going to give you the cleanest sound out of all the warp modes because it's actually shifting the pitch and formance down to fit your project BPM from the original one. So this one's going to sound really low pitched, but it's actually going to sound the cleanest. Check it out. Like there's no artifacts. It doesn't really sound digital. It sounds, it just is a, at a lower pitch. And that's because they basically time stretch it. You know how like in movies when they, people slow down and they go, no, that's because they've slowed down and that pitch of them going, no, becomes so it's the same concept there all right now we have complex which is what i was talking about earlier this is the probably the most universal warp mode here still doesn't sound completely natural but that's to be expected when we're making such a drastic change in the tempo so we have complex and complex pro complex pro gives us a little bit more control over the envelope and the formants and this will just basically just shape the timbre of the sound, but it's way more CPU intensive. If you have everything on Complex Pro and you're doing all these different settings for each one, it's gonna take do a number on your CPU for sure. So for our purposes, I think we'll go with Complex for this one. Okay. So we can, there, there are a couple things we could do here. We can actually, we can actually reverse this sample just by, we can actually just hit R by clicking on the sample here in arrangement view. Just press R. Sounds pretty cool, but doesn't really give us that rhythm that we were that we were getting with the, the other way. And we can also slow it down too. We can, we can time stretch this again, so it's half the BPM of 125. So now it sounds like this, and now it's gonna sound really grainy and stretched out, but this is this this can work on a multitude of levels with a bunch of different samples. I do this all the time. This is also a great idea for, for pulling that concept out and replacing those stretched out, really grainy samples with other samples. So we could we could throw in like those open hi-hats here or like other other little little bits and pieces to create that same recreate that same rhythm on a new channel. So let's go back to our original one here. Now here's something that I think is the the coolest thing about warping in Ableton is adding groove to your drum loop. So many people 
overlook this, at least at least the people I know. Maybe you know some people who use this all the time, but I think this is probably one of the coolest functions here. So we can go to Groove, and I have a bunch of preloaded grooves in here with all these different uh, in the Groove Pool. If you don't know where the Groove Pool is, you can just click this, and it'll pop up there. So we can we can go over over here and select. Let's say uh, I like this one. I use this one a lot. And we can adjust the timing, how quantized it is, and the velocity. So let's actually let's actually boot these up uh, quite a bit here. And let's actually try beats. So that's cool. It kind of gives us a nice bouncy little groove right there based off of this drum and bass loop here. So now let's see what exactly the groove did. Let's hit commit. And you can see that it just put all of these different points right here throughout this entire loop. And these are called, these are transient markers. So basically what we told Ableton to do is like find the transients of this drum loop, then apply this groove right here. And you can extract grooves from other loops too. If you, if you, if there's a loop that you have that you really like the groove of, you can extract that groove just by clicking, yeah, right clicking and uh, over here and hitting extract grooves and that'll go directly into your groove pool down there. But what it does is it it makes these adjustments based on that groove, based on the settings that we, that we set over here and gives us a brand new groove on our existing loop. And I mean, I think that is pretty freaking cool. Let's start over again. Okay, so we, We've loaded in the that same exact sample, but let's say we don't know what the exact BPM is. Maybe let's maybe let's say that the the BPM isn't labeled on the sample. Well, we could what we could do here is we can go, all right, if we're gonna be stretching this into a four bar loop right here, let's take a four bar section and stretch this out to that four bar length. And how we do that is we have to make sure that warp is enabled there. And you can see if like if you look real closely with that that bracket right there at the top when i hold shift there's an arrow that pops up and that allows me to stretch this to fit the grid and we can make it small or as large as we want and that's a really cool way to do it too another thing we could do is if we're let's say we're just chopping let's yeah let's just say we're chopping this thing up and we'll chop this we'll just make a couple of different cuts here by the way i'm using command e to do the cuts so let's say i don't like this part here well i've i've made cuts here at pretty much every every section here what i could do here is i can hold shift and option if you're on a mac i think it's alt if you're on a pc and you see my my pointer my mouse pointer turns into that little mickey mouse hand right there and i can click and drag that sample around so i can sort of adjust the timing of each of each clip here and just re sort of rearrange it from inside the clip which is really handy like i mean this is awesome we call this slipping audio and we got a brand new groove right there and we can go back in and apply those same uh same principles that we did earlier Pull this down here. By the way, to apply the same warping effects to multiple clips, you just click one clip, hold shift, click the last one, and you can adjust those warp parameters all at the same time if they're all at the same warp parameters to begin with. It's pretty cool. And I think that about wraps it up. I think. I mean, those those warping tips help me so much. I work with audio a lot. And if you're the same as me and you liked working with samples and audio too, these tips will be invaluable. So thanks for watching, guys. Please remember to subscribe. I make videos every Friday. They will come out every Friday, I promise you. And they'll be constantly updated with the latest and greatest stuff that I'm learning every day. I'm learning just the same as you guys. So. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Friday.